Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason on this Wednesday. It is Fed Day Wednesday. Yes, every six weeks uh, we get a a big talk from Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve about how, uh, well, hey, they're either saving us from something or fixing something that, uh, well, don't worry, they didn't break it. Somebody did, but but it wasn't them. They're 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 just the ones that uh, you know could, the kindness of their heart. They're just trying to help us, Jason. Right? They're just they're just trying to fix problems that other people created, not them. They 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 never create the problem, Jason. Of course, they want to tell you that they're the only ones that have the solution. There's a lot of finger pointing going on nowadays, isn't there? You know, there's always problems, and uh, for whatever reason, we're programmed to have to blame somebody. It's got to be someone's fault, and in most times, it's someone's fault. So, yeah, Joe, there's a lot of finger pointing, isn't there? There's, uh, you know, it's, uh, the most traditional thing, like what the Fed does, it's always, you know, hey, there's a problem, and then they have fingers pointed in three or four different directions, right? It's never the Fed's fault. It's never our fault. So, yeah, it's... It's a classic uh, game. You know, it's a political game too, and and uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I think there's gonna, there's so many people that I think have no idea how, how this because it's, it's a it's a large system. It's in the large economic world system, so there's a lot of blame to go around. So I just think there's uh, just going to see a lot of finger pointing in the next year or two, Joe. Especially, especially yeah. now. Yeah, I think the we're 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 setting ourselves up for uh, a big big. I guess a. Uh, bigger than normal, uh, obviously election cycle, all that stuff. Uh, but a bigger than than normal finger pointing cycle uh, is upon us, and it's it's one of these things where we already know how it all ends, right? Because it's bubbles. It's not based on reality. Uh, the they don't fix problems. They like to cover problems up. Uh, happened again uh, just just last night. Pac West. Remember Pac West. We were talking a lot about PacWest. They were one of the next banks that was getting ready to fail. Jason, we told everybody the situation is not better. We're now in a situation where the excess bank liquidity, and most of this excess in what we call primary treasury dealers, is starting to evaporate. Oh, oh, not quite yet, but almost a trillion dollars evaporated in the treasury. Because when did it evaporate? Where did it go? They've been soaking up all these treasuries. And again, now the Fed, we anticipate the Fed's going to be raising rates today. As as all of you have been educated when you listen here, because that's what we like to do. Jason, listen, we can just go out and sell gold. We can just pitch it, pitch, 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 pitch. But we want you to be educated so you understand how it really works. And the higher these rates go, the more these these weaker banks are going to have problems. Yep. So yesterday, PacWest got bought up. Here's the funny part. It got bought up by a smaller bank. <laughs> right? Not, not, not by a bigger bank, by a smaller yeah. bank. Uh, and again, remember, it, it's all about we're trying we, – we, we need to become bigger – so the Federal Reserve will, will save us. But, Jason, it started already. Get ready. Uh, this is going to be when this cycle ends. This is going to be a cycle where we sp- will potentially see thousands of more banks disappear. Never has a statement been more profound about how worthless their monetary system is. When the, uh, and I don't know the exact number, 150th bank sized bank in America is buying the 50th or the 49th largest bank and that's just doesn't make sense that's like uh, Joe and I said we're going to go buy one of the big huge gold outfits on the internet just because we just oh just because they failed so badly no gold and silver doesn't do that but but Federal Reserve notes and treasuries and, and the and the the fraudulent mon- monetary system it's showing you how you know, how does that how does some small bird player smaller bird buy the bigger bird it's because the assets are worthless, Joe. People are just 
they just don't understand this. We try to we try every day to get them to understand it, right, Joe? But there's there's knowing and understanding. You can understand a little bit, so you can have a few sound bites. But knowing is is where you want to get to. You really want to understand this to the point where you know it. Yeah, that, and that's really the uh, the hardest part is for a lot of people. Well, I hear what Joe was saying. I hear what Jason said. I still don't understand it. I still yeah. don't understand it. And and the easiest thing to, for for us as far as like the banks go and what's happening with with the banks it, it, it's very simple the banks try to make money on your deposits the federal reserve tells them how much money they need to keep right that's for you know hey you paying mortgages and all that now here's the problem they don't even have to keep enough money to pay everybody's bills every month no well, they're not even close Right? They can lend out, what, 94 cents of every dollar. Now, some of that, they're forced to buy X amount of treasuries, okay? X amount of mortgage-backed securities, and then X amount of other stuff. So so kind of like in, in three, three pieces of, of a pie. Take a pie, and there's only three pieces. One piece, they got to buy treasury. Another piece, they got to buy mortgage-backed securities. And the last piece, the banks get to do what they want. It's the last piece that hurt the, the early bird banks that went under. We're going to talk about that when we get when we return. But now when we're getting ready for phase two, which is being hurt by what they're have to buy. That's coming up next. Don't touch that dial. Thank you. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Wednesday. Let's take a quick look here at the markets. Right, we know we're getting uh, Jay Powell here in a few hours. Uh, looks pretty simple here. Uh, that it's going to be another quarter of a point. Uh, which will put us between 5.25 and 5.50 on the Fed's funds rate. Uh, right now, the Dow uh, just above break even, up about 10 points. The S&P is down 11. The Nasdaq's down 75. Here's a shocker. Well, I'm not shocked. Gold's up 10, 1974. Silver up 25 cents, 24.90. Crude oil, uh, almost eighty dollars a barrel. Get ready. Uh, gas price feeds just jumped twenty cents. By the way, uh, ten-year note three eight eight. So the ten-year note actually down a little bit. Uh, and again, I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to keep your big big dollars in the bank, go right ahead. I don't care. Doesn't affect me at all. But I'm going to tell you, it's coming. I know. I know. I get it. You, you, you thought it would already be here. I, th- I did. I was wrong. That happens. It's coming. The What happened earlier this year, that was a warning. What happened to Pac West, it's another warning. You do with it as you wish. But having gold and silver put away, having, you better have a good financial advisor, and you better have other money in other places that's not correlated to Wall Street, and that's where our friends at Y-Refi come in. Right? Up to 10.25% return. Hey, maybe, you know what, maybe you're one of those that says, hey, you know what, I want to take the next year off. Maybe you want to take two. Great. One year, they'll give you 6.25. Think about it. I'm just talking about uh, the Federal Reserve is going to be uh, between five and a quarter and five and a half. And I just told you the 10 year note only gives you three eight. Come on, man. Heck, you give it, you give Y refi five years, they'll give you 10.25% fixed. It never, ever changes. Doesn't care about Wall Street, doesn't care about bank failures, doesn't care about J Powell. 
invest y refi.com that's the word invest the letter y r e f y.com or call them at 888 y refi 24 and it's like i said jason i've told you for don't put all your money in gold and silver don't have all your money in wall street don't have all your money in the bank remember all the guys that had all their money in housing got wiped out yeah dumb but i'm going to tell you right now leaving money Sitting in a bank account probably is the dumbest thing to do. Right, and that's sad. That's a sad statement. That shouldn't be. Right, with the rate hike today, between let, let's just say five five and a half percent. Okay, the ten year note should be yielding somewhere between seven and a half and eight percent. It's yielding 3.88. Why? Because they know. The bond market. No, they're not. Dude, we deal in debt. That's what we do. We see what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen, right? We just don't know the exact day that things are going to happen. So back to our, 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 our pieces of the pie. Right? So you had banks being required. Hey, I got to buy treasuries. That's that's one piece. Got to buy mortgage-backed security. That's another piece. And then I get to do what I want with that other piece. And guess what the smallest piece is? It, and this would be like it's like a sliver. Oh, that that's the amount of money they're not allowed to use of your deposits. You know, if you ever heard my commercials, and it's so funny, people still. A lot of people have woken up, but there's still some people ignorant out there. When your paycheck goes into the bank, when you put money into the bank, it's not yours. You no longer own it. I don't care what your bank, but I went to the bank and they said that's not true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The bank, you know, think about this. The bank lends money, right? That's what it does. You think legally they can lend money that's not theirs? No, that's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. How do they get to lend the money? Because they own it. Now, the banks that went under earlier this year, their big problem was that third piece. Right? They were They were bad bankers. The Fed was raising rates, and they were just, ah, we don't care. Now, maybe they were just like, oh, the Fed, and there was people out there, and Jason will tell you this, right? Jason, there were people out there that thought the Fed couldn't even get to, to 3% before crashing everything. Right. Right? Right? So these banks, they, they weren't taking precaution. They weren't hedging themselves very well. And when the depositors started to flee, they were forced to sell. Well, what pies, what pieces of the, they only got three pieces of pie. Right? Because they, they took the depositor's fleet, took up that little sliver. That was gone in a, like a second. Now they've got three pieces of the pie to sell. Well, they, they couldn't sell the, the, their own investment. They were horribly done. Right? They were going to take huge losses there. So they started selling what? Treasuries. They started selling mortgage-backed securities. And what people don't understand, when yields rise, and when yields rise, the stuff that you lent at the lower yields is is now a money loser. And they couldn't hold the debt to maturity. Because why? Well, I need the money right now. Some guy just pulled a billion dollars out of my bank, and I don't have a billion dollars. So I got to start selling these treasuries. Or I got to start selling these mortgage backed securities because I did a bad job investing, and they were going under. Now, most of that has been cleaned up because there was other banks that were bad with their third piece of the pie, and they, they did, they've spent the last, what, Four, five months, six months cleaning that up. Here's the problem now. Now the problem is 
it doesn't matter that that third piece of the pie is a little better. Because the depositors have still been pulling their money, which is I've been telling you to do. But now losses are just popping up everywhere. Everywhere in the commercial real estate markets. And now interest rates go higher again. I mean, we, we got housing numbers. Right? We're, we're going to have less than 4 million home sales. And that's, what, that's, that's the good part of the mortgage-backed securities market. That's the one that's hanging in there. There's not enough activity. And now all these treasuries that are sitting there, Because remember, the smallest piece of the, you know, there's that sliver. Throw that out. Forget about the sliver. The sliver's gone. The smallest piece of the pie of the three is banks getting to do what they want. There's not enough. They can't sell enough of that to make up for the other shortfalls. And, Jason, this is why they're all going to go and get rid. This is why they had PacWest get merged. Because they knew before the end of the year, PacWest was going to be done. And, and this they, is they, because they don't have anything to sell. Yeah, they actually absolutely knew. And uh, I don't understand these smaller banks. No, so the, the, the Fed set up the reverse repo for, for banks that qualify. Because I don't think, you know, not everybody can just throw their money at the reverse repo. You have to qualify. But as a smaller bank, if you don't qualify... And in 2021, when this thing started going, because it was uh, the beginning of 2021 in the reverse repo, when these big banks started throwing cash in there, these banks should have known, Joe, not to buy a bunch of low-interest stuff and sit on it. Because the big banks that qualified for the reverse repo, by, by December 31st, the last day of 2021, there was almost $2 trillion in there. That's kind of a big signal. says maybe you better be heavy in cash. Now, of course, we tell you not to have cash, but when it comes to these Interest rates going up in 2022, because that's what happened. That's December 31st, 2021. The, re- the interest rates started going up the next year. These little, these smaller banks, just like Joe said, they were they were bad bankers. They were just not good. They just sat on this low interest stuff saying, ah, it's going to be fine. And they found themselves upside down. And, and uh, the interest rates went up. The uh, reverse repo facilities sat for all this time at over $2 trillion in, in, in cash just sitting there for these big banks waiting to pounce on opportunities like what's going on this year, Joe. And so, uh, yeah, we have, we have that clip, Joe. We have uh, uh, Michael Cohen. He's got this clip of a, a leaked video, and it's, it's of the an FDIC closed-door meeting in November. And these guys are trying to figure out, they're trying to say, hey, uh, we, we don't really think we should be telling the public about this. They, they might get the wrong idea. They might, they might panic. We know, they actually sit in the meeting in this clip. We know things are really bad, but we, we, they don't need to know this. We're going to play this clip. This was in November. So now remember, they claimed, oh, we didn't know. Where were the regulators? What was going on? Uh, they knew in November, and they probably knew before November. This is just when we, we, they, we somebody leaked a clip uh, of, of them talking about knowing about it and then deciding, hey, let's not tell anybody. Right. Let's not tell anybody, right, Jason? Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's pretty. The, the part with the clip with the FDIC is pretty short. I think we could probably fit it in before the break here. Let's. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get it. Let's play it. Let's play it right now. Here's the FDIC talking about in November the problem with the banks. Michael Cohen with about thirty seconds of intro. Here we go. Michael, the market went up today, only by just an inch. Biden would say. (laughs) But we're not talking about the stock market. The stock market and the banks is completely different. So everyone, what bank failed? Why did they fail? And are there more bank failures coming? Well, that's exactly what we're going to go over in today's video. So let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Okay, now first things first, before I get into what bank actually failed, you need to see this leaked footage from the FDIC meeting telling them we do not want the public to know about what's about to happen. And guess what? 
This meeting was in November 2022, right before the huge banking crisis that we saw this year in March 2023. This happens time and time again, everyone. They know exactly what's coming. They try to keep it hush, hush, and then a few months later, it eventually happens. So everyone have a look at this shocking clip, and then we're gonna get into these news stories. A professional need to know. I, I, I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. If they just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's, it's, I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do, <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that will charge them by the hour a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, 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 and it's fine. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. Did you hear? <laughs> We're going to wow. hit the break, Joe Howes. <laughs> wow. So think yeah. about this. Here's what, here's, in case you missed some of that and, and uh, what I caught. Hey, we got a bunch of high executive lawyers in this room right now that are going to tell all the all the rich billionaires how to protect themselves but let's not tell anybody else because well that? they believe more than we believe that the banks are safe we're going to get into these news stories a professional need to know i i, I completely agree with that I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like, my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. So they just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's, it's, I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do, <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that will charge them by the hour a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, 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 and it's fine. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. Did you hear that, everybody? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Incredible. They have more faith. Right? We're the sheeple. That's us. Have more faith. Why? Well, I mean, just turn on the stock channels. Every day they want to tell you, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine until it isn't fine. Right? And th this is what happened. Think about the banks right now. Their credit cards are maxed out. And all of a sudden, one of the, one of the credit cards is calling in and saying, you know what, you're cut off. you got to pay the whole thing in full right now. Right, because that's what happens with commercial real estate. You've got to pay the whole thing in full right now. If not, you're in default. And this is what's going to happen. And, of course, thinking about this in the FDIC, and they're like, yeah, well, they have more faith in the banking system than we do. And when you hear the, you heard the one guy laugh. He kind of chuckled, right? You heard him chuckle, right? Because he's like, yeah, <laughs> like, idiots, right, dummies. What a great job we've done. And don't worry about the rich guys. Look, they got their high-priced lawyers. A bunch of them are in this room right now. And they they can pay a whole bunch of money to these lawyers, and they'll get all protected. They're going to be fine. Why do you think, remember, think, think about Silicon Valley Bank. Why do you think that happened? Now I kind of know why. How much you want to bet some of these big hedge funds that kept all their money at Silicon Valley Bank. Well, one of the lawyers in the room was from uh, was was from one of those hedge funds, and he went and called it. Hey, uh, yeah, you need to come in for a meeting. 
right? So, like Suits, right, right? Uh, the, I don't know if you ever watched the, 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 the show Suits, right? You bring them in for a minute. Hey, guys, uh, you got to get your money out of this bank right now. It's, uh, don't it's tell anybody. Do it quietly. I'm thinking some lawyers got got fired around Silicon Valley Bank because that shouldn't have happened oh, like that. Some oh, some lawyers got lazy uh, in the Caribbean on a cruise or something, just kind of hanging out, and they didn't warn their depositors in time. So somebody got fired on that one because remember we remember Joe, you were we were here reporting it on the air as it collapsed before Friday could even come to an end. They were hoping to get it to the weekend. They couldn't even get it there. So yeah, I remember we, we remember that. Though someone it, got fired. Yeah, they couldn't even make it to then. Uh, $20 gold pieces, one through nine at $2,215. Gold's up 11 right now, 1975. One through nine, 2215. 10 through 19, 2200. 20 or more at 2100. And ninety dollars—that's like barely two, uh, barely a little over two hundred dollars over spot. That's f- awesome. Half dollars. We ran those yesterday. I'm running them again. Silver's up thirty cents, getting ready to go back above twenty-five dollars to the ounce. Half dollar rolls, one through twenty-four rolls, two hundred and thirty. Twenty-five rolls or more at two hundred and twenty-five dollars at eight hundred. Nine five one zero five nine two. Just so a uh, little foreshadowing for everybody. We like to do this. Uh, gold closes here at eleven hundred and or nineteen hundred and seventy-five dollars. And it could go depending on how what Jay Powell says. It could go higher. Could go lower. We don't know. But right now the gold markets are looking like they want to run because they get. These banks are in bigger trouble than people realize. The government can't afford these rate hikes. They can't afford it. And we're already paying a trillion dollars in interest. And who's going to soak up all this debt? The That reverse repo keep, drops by the day. Talked about that in yesterday's show. We're, you're going to be looking at $20 gold at about twenty two fifty tomorrow, and depending, who knows? I mean, we could see $2,000 gold before the end of the day today, depending on what Jay Powell says uh, in that press conference, Jason. Yeah, can you imagine if a couple of billionaires happen to see that video? I mean, because this stuff is always hushed and, and, and suppressed. But can you imagine if a few billionaires saw that, that clip that we played, you hear it, hear that clip, and then the, the thing that they can say, well, I, I don't know what to do. I've got treasuries or I've got cash in the bank. I don't know what to do. And somebody in the room is, you know, is going to say, "Well, you could put it away in some gold and silver." All it takes is a couple of those guys, right, Joe? How many how many billionaires does it take to move the gold market? They start moving out of the banks and into the gold and silver. I mean, one, when that happens, gold one, moves. One, maybe a half of a billionaire, right? I mean, it really doesn't take uh, very much at all, especially with uh, the inventory levels on the exchanges right now with gold and silver. Uh, here's the great. Here's what I love. The premiums have come. They're, they're back to normal, right? Silver. The premiums are back to where they were in 2018, right? I mean, it took five years for them to come back down. Gold. They're back to normal. We're buying. You're not buying things. Uh, you know, think about uh, what during the crisis, right? We we were what 23, 24, 2500. On, on a twenty dollar gold piece, and gold, gold's actually a little higher now than it was then. And we're talking about hey, buy twenty or more, twenty one hundred and ninety dollars. That's that's when you want to do it. That's when you want to hit it. Because guess what? Uh, I think we're going to be back. And do you want to wait? You're going to pay more. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And and again, this is this is the problem. And I think this is why Wall Street privately, quietly, is like, yeah, they're about done here no matter what inflation does. Because simply between the government and the banks, they can't afford it. No one even knows. Where's the bottom of commercial real estate? Where is it? Here's the other thing you got to remember. The really good companies locked in as much debt as possible. 
in 2020 and 2021 because they knew what was coming. The problem is they all do short-term interest-only stuff. Heading into 2024 and 2025, all of this stuff has got to be refinanced, and it's going to wipe out. This is why bankers, why are bankers so high? Because the ones that couldn't lock in enough for long, when they go to refinance, they're broke. We'll be back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour on this Wednesday. Of course, we're all waiting now. Uh, Jay Powell will be talking here in a little bit, in a few hours, uh, about where uh, interest rates are headed. Uh, we we are anticipating another quarter of a point rate hike. Uh, we think it's going to be what I'll call a soft quarter of a point. Uh, where Jay Powell will be, hey, we, we, we're going to be higher for longer, and uh, but yeah, we could pause, we could hike again, uh, but uh, I think we're really at this point now where we're uh, maybe one more rate hike to come uh, at, at some point, Jason. But the the cycle uh, is, is coming to an end as already Pack West taken over you know one of janet yellen's consolidations as they're not able to survive with rates this high yeah we've said it's uh since 2021 when the inflation came in you know and then they started uh raising the rates 2022 that it's they've, they've got you know not very many plays and all the plays they have are bad as far as the fed making the decisions raising the rates are bad and uh uh and not raising the rates is bad. Printing money, that's not good either for the inflation. They, they don't have a whole, there's not a lot of tools in the toolbox, as they say, to, to, to fix what, what has happened. And uh, I can't wait to see, just as you said at the beginning of the broadcast today, how many uh, fingers are going to be pointed at everyone but themselves when things get bad, Joe. Yeah, and again, I think it's something where uh, the, you know, when we look at debt now, uh, this is going to be a new phase uh, for the the Treasury and for the Federal Reserve, uh, because the the realities are now they they were running a lot of different. And this is the problem: they run all of these games to give you the illusion that things are better than what they are. Uh, I mean, look at the the guy from the FDIC in that clip. Hey, listen, they actually think that uh, their money's safe. And the FDIC is going to pay their claims. As a matter of fact, they think it more than we think it. Right? And they play games. And, and this is what they did. Why did? Why is the 10-year note so low they've been playing games? Now, some of it is because, hey, a lot of people out there are like, yeah, screw you guys. I'd rather be early. I don't care. Maybe it doesn't blow up till 2024. Right? Maybe it doesn't blow up to 2025. I don't care. I'm not playing. And I'm just going to buy treasuries and, and, and F you to everybody else, right? Some of that is true. But some of that is because, well, the Fed deliberately didn't sell a lot of long-dated uh, maturities to try to keep it low. That game's over because now they're rolling over 20% of the debt every month, Jason. And, and now they're like, oh, now we're, now we're screwed again. We, we've got to now go back to selling Tons of 10 and 20 and 30 years, uh, and, and it really is a, a bad situation because that's really going to put a lot more pressure on these what I'll call marginal banks. Well, and even the guys in that FDIC meeting clip that we played, or the big bankers or anyone, I don't think anyone has the answer to for sure. It is, there's always this idea that, okay, at some point they'll raise the rates till it breaks and they'll have to come down or stay the same. There's no guarantee of that. So why would you buy 10-year and 30-year stuff if you don't know where the top of the interest rates are going? You, know, you already see these collapsing banks with the lower interest rate stuff. You don't want to be the next one. So there's going to be a lot. Of, here's the thing. With a Ponzi scheme monetary system, you have to have money flowing and moving. And I think there's a lot of freezing going on. People, you know, banks and institutions wanting to put it into where, well, where the, uh, the reverse repo market is. Hold some cash and wait for the right time to buy when the interest rates top. So it's 
I think you're going to end up with a situation, Joe, where the entire financial system, at least in this country, they want everyone's going to want it to collapse. I think everyone's wanting it to collapse because that's the only way to try to, to, to benefit if you're holding cash. $20 gold pieces, one through nine. $2,215. 10 through 19, $2,200. 20 or more, $2,190. And remember, right now, gold's up 11. Looks like 2250 maybe 2260 If it opens here tomorrow, could open higher, could open lower. We'll see. And then on silver, listen, that's probably the, 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 uh, the buy of the day because uh, silver's uh, up. 30 cents right back to $25, uh, silver or half dollar rolls. $230 a roll, buy 25 rolls or more, $225, 800 951 As we said, Jay Powell's coming up. We expect another quarter point rate hike and, and the news about PAC West uh, being quote unquote consolidated. See, Jason. They can tell you, see, well, it didn't go under, right? It didn't get, it didn't go under. It got consolidated. Consolidated, just like those two banks we talked about. Right. <laughs> got to consolidate, right? The, the, the 150th biggest bank is going to buy the 50th biggest bank. We got to consolidate because it's just, these assets are just worth so much. They're so valuable that some small players buying it. Where else in, in, in the, the business cycle, in an actual, you know, uh, you know, business, any business, Target. Can you imagine Target buying out Walmart? The Target's big. Yeah, it's important. They're not buying out Walmart. There's no there's no way that's ever happening, at least not right, not right now in the conditions. But that's kind of what that, this that, is. Yeah, that, that's not even the equivalent, right? Because Target's big. This other bank... I mean, you're talking about I don't even I don't even know in the retail space uh, what, what equivalent you could use uh, to, to 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 have that happen, right? That'd be like I don't know, Food City uh, buying Kroger. That's never going to happen. <laughs> By the way, the FDIC, since we're on the FDIC, has issued a warning about banks lying about the uninsured deposit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're going to finish with. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. I'm going to tell you again. $20 gold pieces. One through nine. $2,215. 10 through 19. $2,200. 20 or more. $2,190, right? That's a one-ounce $20 gold piece, 1866 uh, All the way up to 1933, we got Liberties, we got Saints, uh, half-dollar rolls, $230. These are silver half-dollar rolls, 20 silver half-dollars, $230. Buy 25 rolls or more, $225 at 800 Nine five one zero five nine two. Now listen to this nonsense. By the way, this is, uh, I believe, up on our website today. If not, it'll be up tomorrow. The FDIC is calling out banks for not properly reporting their uninsured dis- deposits. So what? Oh wait, wait. Are they over-reporting it? Or are they? They're, they're over- oh no 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 no. They're hiding their uninsured deposits because they're excluding what they're saying is deposits backed by collateral. That's absolute bogus. That is not in uh, in following of the law, the rules that have been issued by the FDIC. Why would they even allow this? What do you mean? These banks should be fined. They should be censored. They should be made to report it properly. No, nope. well, they don't want to call anybody out. They're saying that uh, federal lawmakers have stepped up calls for more stringent regulation of the banking industry. But, Jason, it is incredible that the FDIC is coming out and saying that, yes, the banks are now trying to cover up 
how big their uninsured deposits actually are. And again, without transparency, we never can have uh, that conversation about, hey, how do we fix it? Remember how we started the show? They're always lying. They're always manipulated. They're always playing these games. And Jay said, this is a, this is a big problem. Right, the, the, the Fed emergency loan system, it's already, every week it grows and grows and grows. Uh, and again, we're down to what, like, they got to pay all this stuff back like in eight months. That's over $100 billion. And we know that's enough to wreck most of the banks in this country, right? What was Silicon Valley was like a top 20 bank, uh, and, and the loss was like $20 billion that wiped them out. Yeah, and, and uh, just like that big wig in the, the video we played earlier, which is uh, FDIC, he said, well, everyone, you know, the, the, the average depositor trusts that the FDIC insurance will, will cover them, so they have all this trust uh, later on in the video. And you've made these numbers before. These are just the numbers, but he's, you know, uh, Michael Cohen says, look, there's $122 billion in FDIC insurance. He said that's not even 2% of the $17.2 trillion, $17. trillion in deposits in American banks. So, Joe, no one's deposits are covered and guaranteed, or less than 2%. None of these banks are, 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 are secure. None of them are. None of them have, have the assets to cover what's going on. And, and, and if they can't sell what they got, they're actually worse than they were maybe 10 years ago or even, even just five years ago. The, the best banks, the best banks, the only piece of the pie they can sell that is worth it is the Rome. Right, their own making. You know, hey, these were if you if, if they did a good job, they can sell that. But that's the smallest piece of the pie. That doesn't go very far. And for some of these banks, well, gosh, we didn't do very good on that piece of the pie. The treasury piece, the mortgage backed piece, they're losers, and it's the Fed's fault they're losers, not the bank's fault. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Jason and I are coming right back with the half empty cup. 